No one's here. Don't know where the receptionist is. Hi, my name is Tina, I'm a budget solo female traveler and I'm currently traveling around the world, either for one year or as long as my money lasts. And I'm now in Europe. So the question is, how do you travel Europe on a budget? Good morning everyone, I'm heading to the train station right now. It's early in the morning, but it's Eurostar and Eurostar tells you to be there like one hour before. This was my room and my bed is a little bit of a mess right now, but What do you do in a situation like this? I have to go to the station now, so it's supposed to be someone here. My hostel in London was close to King's Cross station, which is one of the major train stations and therefore really convenient location. Finally waiting for my train. I got some things at the bakery because it's like a four hour something ride, but I'm glad that they're already letting people line up. It's a huge train station by the way. In my previous video I mentioned how inconvenient it was to take the bus from Paris to London, so I was really happy that on my way back I had booked a train. Coffee break. And I paid like about nearly 4 euro for this coffee. Like I enjoyed my time in London so so much, but god it was expensive. Eurostar is a high-speed train service connecting major cities in Europe, notably London, Paris and Brussels. I had a very comfortable train ride, they are offering onboard Wi-Fi and you have a lot of space at your seat. This is my train, Eurostar. It was so much nicer than the bus ride and the ferry ride the last time. But we have to get on a ferry now, but it's not like uh, supposed to be a small ferry. Running through Amsterdam is the Amstel River and my hostel was located on the other side of it. So in order to get there, I again had to take a ferry. Luckily, these ferry rides are very short and also for free. It was luckily pretty easy, like right when I came out of the central station there, there was the ferry and it's like a five minute ride, not even maybe that. In Amsterdam I was again staying at Klink Hostels. A great way to save money in Europe on accommodation is to stay at hostels. Some hostels even are members of a rewards program that if you join it you can get some additional bonuses or discounts. Hi, is this the reception? Yeah. Yes, it is. Check-in is after 4 p.m. Which is a very, very big lounge. I'm just going to wait here for a bit. Finally I checked in. That took a while because they messed up the dates and I didn't notice that either. So I was supposed to arrive tomorrow. It's, it's so, so, so different from the one in London. We can do a room tour. This is big enough for a room tour. And I have breakfast for free included. Yeah, and they have a restaurant, they have a cafe, they have... You can find Klink Hostels in Amsterdam, London and in Dublin. If you want to give them a try, you should use my discount code, which is in the description below, and which will give you 10% off their non-refundable rate. So it's really weird light here, but I don't want to move again. I just move up here. Anyway, trying to breakfast because it's included. They have also pancakes and they have coffee and juice. I'm just happy I can get a coffee in the morning. Look at me wearing lipstick and on. So I have a couple of places I wanted to go to. One thing that happened yesterday is I wanted to buy a ticket for the Anne Frank house. Advice here, you have to buy a ticket in advance. Maybe two months in advance. It's so booked out. Many people tell you how amazing the city is, but my first impression wasn't the best one. But like I felt that the city center is way more touristy than I expected it to be. And everyone's running for the ferry now, so maybe I should do. 
The Anne Frank House is a museum located in Amsterdam dedicated to the life of Anne Frank, a Jewish girl who hid from the Nazis during World War II. You might have heard of the diary of Anne Frank, in which she documented her experience in hiding. I made it to the Anne Frank house, would have been really interesting to see it. But also on a side note, you're not allowed to film inside or take photos. So I couldn't have really shown you, but it's still personally for me, like I would have wanted to see it. Now in a Jordan district, it's known for its narrow streets. You have nice cafes, restaurants. Compared to the city center where I was in yesterday, it's a lot nicer here. So I don't know if you knew, but Amsterdam is famous for its pancakes, waffles, fries, and I want to try as much of that as possible. And we're going to start with some pancakes today. What I didn't know is that there are actually so, so many pancake places in Amsterdam. Like in every corner you have a like pancake, fries. The Pancake Club is a popular spot offering a modern twist on traditional Dutch pancakes. They also serve vegan and gluten-free options. My schedule for tomorrow uh, just cleared itself today, so I can also go tomorrow and the day after to do some more sightseeing. I'm going to do one or two things today, but it's raining. I mean, I've eaten my fair share of pancakes. These are really good and they smell incredible. They were some really good pancakes. The stuff was so, 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 so nice. I wanted to go to Wondel Park. Instead, I'm going to go now and get one of those really good and famous waffles here in Amsterdam. Amsterdam has actually a huge amount of very interesting museums, like for example the Rijksmuseum being the most famous one. Also yesterday I passed the Sex Museum and the Body, muse body Something Museum. There are tons and tons of really cool and interesting museums in the city. The Rijksmuseum is famous for its impressive collection of Dutch Golden Age paintings, including works by renowned artists such as Rembrandt. So guys, here right behind me is Kip Market and I want to find a place that's called Rudy's Original Strobe Waffle which is the place that you want to go to. The Kuip Market in Amsterdam was named after Albert Kuip, a 17th century Dutch painter known for his landscapes and portraits. It is the largest outdoor market in the Netherlands, offering a wide range of products including fresh produce, flowers and clothing. Wow. <laughs> I hope you will survive. That used to work. I will survive. <laughs> Oh, oh. I just ruined my sweater and my, my jacket. The caramel of my waffle. Because it's coming out. Be careful if you get one. This is the chocolate one. Chocolate with caramel inside. It's still hot and freshly made. So. Was totally worth it. This was one of the best waffles I ever had in my entire life. So good. But also enough sugar for today. Cheese is a big deal in Amsterdam. You can either go to one of the many cheese shops, try some of their free samples, buy one for yourself as a souvenir or go to the cheese museum. I have to go through the city center again and maybe we're going to pass some of these shops and see if we can taste some cheese. The cheese was incredibly good, so can highly recommend you to try some of those shops if you like cheese. I was considering for a moment to buy one of them, but one of those round little cheeses was about like 15 euros, so uh, not today. Something that I've been noticing is that on the first day I was totally overwhelmed by all the trams, the bikes, the people. Just today it feels really normal to me and quiet. So I'm heading currently to the Blumen Markt, the world's only floating flower market. It's really hard to say. I feel like I found it. The Blumen Market is the world's only floating flower market, with stalls set up on houseboats along the single canal. The market is particularly known for its vast selection of tulip bulbs, which are synonymous with Dutch culture and are available in a multitude of colors and varieties. It's basically this one street. It's a bit touristy, slightly. A lot of souvenirs that you can buy here. Next stop is we have to try fries and you can see how popular this place is where I'm at so this will take a while but mm. 
You do not have a lot of time to choose. It's all a little bit hectic. Um, but I got mine. Oh, I'm waiting here. I gotta call my name at some point. Tina? Tina, yeah. And I got Riffle, Riffle Mayo, which uh, he told me is popular. So. Uh, After you're done with the video, the neighbors don't want people to eat here. Yeah. This is a residential area, so I was just told it's not a good idea to sit here around and film and eat, but you get the picture. Oh. Those fries were good. I would say not maybe the best fries that I ever had in my entire life. So that's awkward. Look who's here. Hi, hi. That's Taiho. He's also a YouTuber. Yeah. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, almost. Kind of it's actually Taiho. Tiho. Tiho. I'm so sorry. Uh, I just found his videos on YouTube and now he's yeah. here. We are going to Wondel Park now, finally. Like, I wanted to go yesterday, but... Wondel Park is the largest park in Amsterdam. It was originally named differently and renamed Wondel Park in honor of a famous Dutch poet. I would recommend you actually to rent a bike when you go there. I think it's way more fun than just like walking through. Maybe I do that tomorrow, but... So this, my friends, is the museum square, and here's the Van Gogh museum. Museum, and you mentioned Rembrandt things, also yeah. In the building over there. Okay. The big one. See, I'm, I'm getting advice here from a local, which is so great. <laughs> to live and to this day only women are living here yes in this courtyard still uh -huh. so it's super oh. you can walk in here there's two churches one is hidden in the in the evening or at night some places in amsterdam are also lit up and look very beautiful so taking a walk at that time of the day might also be very rewarding you might also just walk into a street artist like this one Especially the area around the station looks very beautiful at night. So hey, good morning. Today is my last full day here in Amsterdam and today we are going to do a canal cruise because it's something that you can't do in other cities. Usually I'm really excited for this cruise. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because there yeah, are several places where you can get like a candle cruise a lot basically so you have to check beforehand where exactly you have to go If you want to take a canal cruise in Amsterdam, you have multiple companies to choose from. But you don't have to pay a lot of money for it. I only paid 30 euros for a one hour canal cruise, including wine and cheese. You are also going to learn a lot about Amsterdam. <laughs> Thank you. This was a really fun experience. Like I'm slightly shrunk because they give you wine and cheese. If you booked a tour with wine and cheese, it wasn't really expensive. Nice experience. Can I highly recommend that. So. <laughs>